Hey, what's up? What's going on? It's your girl, Mary Jane. Please like, comment, subscribe to my YouTube channel. It'll be greatly appreciated from the bottom of my heart, my peace, my peoples. So let's talk about Black Ink Crew Chicago, Season 3, Episode 10, Sneak Peek. Let's get it going. So everyone's in the shop except for Ryan. He's not at the shop yet. And so, you know, um, Van is sleeping on the couch and he's just in his glory sleeping, having a good time at work or whatever. Then Charmaine walks over there to um to Van and let him know that, hey, you know, that's a piss spot. I pissed on that couch. I was drinking so much. I pissed. It's like Charmaine ain't got no shame at all. She you can't embarrass this girl whatsoever you can't take her nowhere unless you want her to be ratchet and out of control but that's how Charmaine gets down she's like the comedy relief of the show but sometimes she's too ratchet for the show but it's all good and so you know um Van was like, yo, Charmaine's like a dog. You know, she just lifts her leg up and piss. She just marks her territory. Boy, didn't he describe Charmaine well. It was like, oh, no. Then Ryan walks in the shop or whatever. He hasn't been in the shop in six weeks. We have learned, and we learned that Ryan had a heart attack. So the last episode that we seen Ryan on when he was on the phone with his father and about to dial 911 or whatever, he was actually really having a heart attack and he's been out of work for about six weeks. So it seems like the people in the shop kept the shop together and it was open and everything. You know, they was running the shop without Ryan being there. So I don't know. I think, you know, Van might be like part owner or, you know, over everybody for some reason. I don't know why I think that, but you guys tell me what you think about the situation. So, um, Ryan talks about like he's been super stressed going through so much stuff keeping the shop together all the drama with the shop the drama with the kids the drama with Rachel the drama with the blogs just drama in general that wore him down he just can't take it anymore it's too much going on and he's trying to be around for him and his kids so he's gonna take it easy and take it slow and you know um Don was like, you know, I ain't gonna lie, it's been hectic, it's been weird around here without Ryan around, you know, taking care of his clients, dealing with his clients and all this other stuff, but I guess they held it together because they still open, the shop is still there, and it was all at work today, so Charmaine, um, so Charmaine, she tells, Ryan asks, how's everybody doing, what's going on, Charmaine says, hey, listen, I got my job back at GCI, she's at the radio, so again, Ryan was like, how the hell you do that, because Ryan knew the last time he saw her, she was fired, and she done messed up, but Charmaine got her job back, and I know how she did that, because she, she's on um, Black Ink Crew, and she's on VH1, so therefore, that's cross promotion for GCI so hopefully Charmaine gets it together keeps her job do what she's supposed to do and keep that money go coming in keep that money maker because she might not have a boyfriend next episode <laughs> so and so Charmaine also gives you know Don props and was like you know Don has been the resident piercer piercer and he's been doing well he's been bringing in that cash cow he's been making that money he's been making money them bringing that money into the show so it's so good and so then Charmaine looks over to you know Don's hand Don's wrist and was like oh look you got that bling on that looks nice you better keep it on your wrist because we have a resident thief here and she looks at Cobra that was cold-blooded low down dirty Charmaine Charmaine why you do that girl like that why you do Cobra like that why you do that? Even Danielle ain't hating. You hating. You throwing shots. Like, come on. I thought you was cool with her. You cried with her. You were sad because her father passed away and all this other stuff. And now you talking about we family and now you just you just dumped on her like, whoa. Cobra didn't say that. She's just sitting over there. It's just terrible because, you know, Cobra should have, when she brought the um, bag back of clothes, the bag back to you know Danielle for dressing her for her date with you know Velvet she should have just told her that she lost the watch or she should have texted her not just leave the bag there and have Charmaine and Danielle ask her about the watch but Cobra says in her confessionals that she paid for the watch double she paid double so they punked Cobra they straight they be punking Cobra that's what's going on they punking Cobra they made her pay double for it embarrass her on TV then call her the resident thief or whatever that is so cold blooded let's slow down dirty 
So, anyways, Cobra was like, I the watch was cheap, it was only $30, so then why you pay double for it? Don't be letting them girls punk you. You just lost the watch. That happens. People lose shit. That's why people have insurance. Was there any insurance on that watch? Or did they collect the insurance and then got paid twice? <laughs> like, yo, what's going on? So, anyways... You know, then Charmaine, she talks about, hey, there's a client, there's a rapper, up-and-coming rapper from Chicago. She's a female. She used to play, you know, basketball or whatever, but she turned it down to, and to rap or whatever. So she wants Ryan to go to L.A. to tattoo her. Ryan said he can't go to L.A. because he ain't feeling good. He ain't up to it. So anyways... Um, Charmaine was, so then Danielle jumps in. She was like, well, ain't Kat in LA? And so then she can do it. And so then that's when Charmaine goes, well, ain't Kat tired of Ryan sloppy seconds? So what is, what is, you know, Charmaine trying to say that he, she, she's getting his sloppy seconds of his penis because he's with Rachel. And she trying to say, you know, Kat's getting his sloppy seconds from, you know, getting clients and using nine Meg's name or whatever. What is she trying to say that she's been, been eating off of Ryan and sleeping off of Ryan? What's good with that? Like, yo, come on, Charmaine. Charmaine just throwing shots. She is taking it all the way there. <laughs> So they're going to find out if Kat could do it. Kat could do it. She tats to her. Tat, Kat tattoo that girl right. I've never seen Kat give a bad tattoo since I've been watching this show. So anyways, so moving on from that. Um, <laughs> so then, you know, Cobra and um, Velvet, they go on a double date with Junior and Lily. They're at the bowling alley. They're chilling, whatever. They coupled up. We find out that Cobra and Velvet are dating them. Nagas this relationship. They love each other. Cobra loves her big old badunka dunk. Loves her booty. Loves to see the booty clap. She loves to see the cakes or whatever. And so Lily and Junior are saying that their relationship is going well. They're working it out. You know, they're doing their thing. So anyways, Cobra ends up talking to Lily, telling her, hey, did you see what happened in the shop today? How they dissed me? How they, you know, how you see that? How they call me out like that? And so then... You know, Lily was like, don't worry about that. That ain't nothing. One's an effing um, receptionist. The other one's the manager. They ain't nobody. Like, you, they don't pay your bills, but and uh, they don't pay your bills. But at any other job, the manager could fire you. But Charmaine ain't that type of manager. You know what I mean? <laughs> Only Ryan could do that. <laughs> so... So then, you know, Cobra, she goes, yeah, that's right. One answer phones and the other one orders toilet paper or paper towel. So she was like, you know what? Lily's right. So they're cool. Everything's good. <laughs> and um, it's like, whoa. <laughs> so then we get back to the shop. And it's four in the shop. And I think Don's in the shop, too, as well. And I think Danielle's in the shop. I can't remember. So that a woman, she comes in with her daughter. And she was like, she wanted a tattoo. She's crying. You could tell that, you know, she's sad. Her daughter's real pretty. She's with her daughter and everything. She was like, I want a tattoo of my son or whatever. He was shot in the face. You know, she shows a picture of her son being shot, whatever. And she shows, you know, a picture of him when he wasn't shot, you know. And she was like, I want the tattoo on my face. And I was like, I was hoping... Four would not give this woman a tattoo on her face. I was like, she's going through grief. She's mourning. She's going through all that other stuff. So it, she probably don't really know what she's doing. And she also looked like she might have been drunk. She might have been drinking. But she looked like she could have been high off or something. Or she was just in a lot of pain and she was in a lot of hurt. So, you know, she wants a tattoo or whatever. And, um... And, you know, it, it was just a bad situation to see that. It was sad, you know, and um, seeing that they lost their son. She lost her son. The sister lost her brother. And that, that young boy that was murdered and shot, how many times he was shot, probably was their protector, probably was there helping them. He, he was probably there for, he was probably the mother and the father for the mother and the, uh, and the daughter or his sister. And now they're left out here naked in this world without his protection. So hopefully they got some protection out there. They got God's protection, somebody protection, because I know that's a hard situation, especially if you're a single woman and you are living in maybe a high crime neighborhood, people try to take advantage of you and think that they can run up on you or do some crazy clap back to you because you know you don't have no protection they know but they ain't no man around there's no protection or whatever so anyways so that was a sad situation and so you know she gets the tattoo or whatever and um 
and floor it looks it looked like the dude like maybe it was a little wider or whatever so she gets a tattoo and he shows and she was like who's that who's that man on my face i don't know that man i don't know that man who's that that's not him and she's crying and floor four was like what am i supposed to do he's like yo um what's going on he was like yo it is your son that's the picture he was like hold on wait a minute in the mirror it looks different but hold on let me let me take a picture of it and show it. she was like i don't know who that man is that's not my son who's that strange man that man looks older and i just bust out laughing i could not stop laughing it's not funny but she was like who's that who's that <laughs> she said who's that on my face i don't know that man i don't know him that don't look like my son who's that that's a stranger on my face <laughs> four was so shocked he didn't know what to do he just wanted to crawl up into a corner oh my god that <laughs> was so funny i just was gonna say i like it you know and this and her daughter was like that mom that does look like him mom that does look like him and she was like, I don't know who this is. And she was, she called him a pussy ass nigga. She called him something. And she, she, you know, she said, get the F out my face to the cameras. She cussed floor for, she, yo, that was grimy, yo. So, um, you know, she's in mourning and she's in pain. But if that's any demonstration of how she was as a parent, you know, we got to fit, we got to pray for her daughter. That shit was sad. <laughs> she was like i don't know who that man is that don't look like him i was like yo that gotta hurt and she told four to kiss her ass then charmaine she gets home she's at her boyfriend's house I just, yo she was like i don't know who that man is that that looked like a man i don't know i was like yo so anyway charmaine gets home and you know she's showing her fupa you know, whatever, and, you know, her boyfriend's like, you know, you gained some weight and all that other good stuff, and so it is what it is with that. She was, he was like, you got a big drumstick, a big turkey going on, so anyways, Ashley and Dawn, they go get an ultrasound or whatever, and then Don had the nerve to say that he was surprised, you know, when Ashley got pregnant. How was you surprised, Don, when Ashley got pregnant, when you was coming home doing work hours to go have sex with Ashley and make and wearing all different types of um costume because Ashley had quit her job and these guys were talking about you have sex like four or five times a day. You was even sleeping at work, Don, because you was like Ashley is wearing you out. So don't act like you surprised. <laughs> so, anyways, the baby's healthy, they happy, and Don feels like he's in a better place because he put Ashley on a budget because she got expensive taste and he feels good right now because he's making a lot of money piercing. I'm I I don't have I just got my ears pierced or whatever so much how much money do you make off a of piercing but plus he's doing tattooing so he can take care of his kids and have a little money for himself i highly doubt that but anyways we're gonna keep moving and so um junior rolls up to the shop and he wants to talk to ryan and cobra and he's talking he was like yo guess what i seen an instagram post and it was you know who it was Lily, and she was saying, I love you, Poppy, to another dude on Instagram. I was like, yo, I was like, come on, Junior. You knew she was crazy. You knew she was wild. You knew she had baggage, had trust issues. Like, come on, you, you didn't see the writing on the wall. Anybody that buy her a bottle of Jack Daniels, she's going to be their girlfriend. So don't even don't even try to play us with that. He was uh, all acting like he's all shocked and surprised. Like, yo, come on. He was like, let me show you something, Ryan. Look at this. Look at her Instagram. It showed the poster. That's the guy that Lily was kissing and giving camera time to him, mentioning his band, talking about he's a producer. He's this, he's that. So it was like, yeah, all right. <laughs> Lily, Lily's a mess. Lily is a tired, worn out summer gun. So anyways, so Cobra, she wants to be nosy and look at the picture too. So she looks at the picture and she was like, oh, ah, ah, oh, making noises and things like that. And so then that's when Junior was like, so what's going on, right? He was like, so do you know him? Have you seen him before? Has he been to an apartment? And so then that's when, you know, Cobra snitches. She starts with the loose lips and she starts to say that, yeah, I know him. He's been to the apartment. I don't know if they had sex. I wouldn't put it past her. Because Junior asked Cobra if, you know, Lily had sex with him or whatever. And so then Ryan was like, oh, see that mother effer trying to play you? That mother trying to play you? 
<laughs> like, yo. And he was like, I told you about that Nine Mag. Is, is Nine Mag is like an aphrodisiac. It makes people go wild. It makes you want them more. It makes you want to be with them or whatever. And so then Cobra gets shady in her little confessional talking about, oh, so that's the way you was feeling about Cat Ryan not too long ago. <laughs> they, are, they are too much. They are too much. Oh, my goodness. So... Um, Junior's going to run and tell, you know, um, Lily was happening. So what do you guys think? You think Cobra should have kept her mouth closed and she shouldn't have said anything? You know, it all depends on how close she is to Junior and how close she is to Lily. But the problem is, is like when she does, um, drop the ball on Lily, she lives with this girl. So now she's going to have to live with somebody that ultimately that's going to, could become her enemy because she's in their business. It's not any of Junior's business what Lily does at home or whatever. But if Junior's your boy and your friends or whatever and you have a bond with him, then you might possibly tell him, but you got to be prepared for the consequences. So you should have been ready for that attack from Lily when she came at you. So, um, like, if it all depends, like, people do inform other people when they're cheating, but it's different when your co workers with both of these people. So now you got to work with both of these people, and one lives at your house. So, to keep your sanity and to keep things straight, you know, you lead Junior to the water, but you don't help him drink it. You, you pour the water down his throat. You lead the horse to the water. You can't make it drink it, but you, you made him drink it. And so now you put yourself out on the table all out in the open and you didn't even tell you should have told you told junior that you didn't want no drama you didn't want no problems but you should have specifically said to junior hey listen don't tell lily i told you but we already know junior has loose lips too he runs his mouth as well so i say she should have kept her mouth closed mouth closed until she got Lily out of her house or one of them went to another job because sooner or later you know lily is going to you know it's going to run its course, but I understand why she had to tell her. But, you know, now you got drama at your crib. So, anyways, uh, moving on from that. <laughs> and so, then, you know, um, damn. So, then, that's so messed up with for what happened to him. Yo, he's such a nice guy. He don't even know what to do. That lady is all over the place. So, we get to... Um, we get to Kat. She's out in L.A. They show her she has assistants or whatever. And one of her assistants flushed tampons down the toilet. Bet you would have been fired immediately, you nasty son of a gun. Um, so then moving on from that, um, you know, Kat talks about, yes, I did mess up. I did sleep with Ryan. You know, it was a mistake. That's why I moved out here to L.A. So you was running from your problems. Should have faced it. But if you're doing good in L.A., then you're doing good, but it doesn't seem like you're gonna be doing good in LA next year. It seems like you're gonna you gonna need they're gonna double up your, on your rent, and I know how that feels, girlfriend. That ain't no joke. And they want it the next month. Like, come on. So, anyways, so Danielle and Donna talking or whatever, and then Danielle get a text from Charmaine. Charmaine showing her all the things that this lady is saying about you know forced tattoo. She's damaging his damaging his reputation talking negative about him probably asking people to judge his tattoo or not yo you know black ink new york to give some bad tattoos but ain't nobody went online and started talking about them <laughs> i don't know if this lady was trying to get camera time for her son to get his story out there for people to find out but she should have been like oh this is what happened to my son or if somebody did murk him um you know, if they if they didn't get caught or whatever, she should have been there campaigning like, hey, you know, this is the person that possibly killed my son. You know, if anybody have any information, you know, bring it to the police or something like that instead of acting a complete fool, a complete mess. <laughs> but she did bring receipts. She brought her son's picture of being shot like, oh, my God, that image was bad. So anyways, um, moving on from that, it seems like it's all crazy. And so, you know, four, he walks in the shop. He he was like, yo, you guys see what this lady's posting about me? Then four, I was like, you know what? I don't know if I should tattoo anymore. This never happened to me. I think I should give it up. Donna's like, why would you? That's only one one time. That's only happened once. That's never happened to you before. You're going to let one mistake, one bad tattoo, you know, stop you from doing what you want to do. It don't make no sense. And so, so, you know, Don was like, you know what? For Don was like, nah, you can't give up. You got to keep moving. Like, 
it looked just that tattoo looked just like I told you you did a good job and then Danielle co-signed that he did do a good job to me it looked alright it was not wrong with it or whatever maybe he should have put some color in it I don't know so um for for he leaves and he's gonna go home and be all depressed or whatever he should go get Nikki and Nikki would go find that woman have a conversation with her and it'd be all straight but then that'll lead to more violence so let's not even let me not even go there so <laughs> so anyways it's just like oh my goodness it's so messed up what that lady's doing the floor <laughs> oh my goodness so anyways um danielle and you know um what's her name danielle and charmaine they go get some cool freeze ice um cool couple ice whatever freeze off the fat because she wants to get her fupa fix or whatever and she's all in the doctor's off office acting real ratchet and ghetto speaking just like crazy or whatever but that's what i mean that's how she do it that's how she stay lit that's how she stay in the show that's how she get camera time the doctor's looking puzzled like i have no idea who this is but you know what i am going to entertain charmaine right now because she has cameras and she's giving me promotion so i'm gonna entertain this buffoonery right now and so and she does and they have a lovely conversation well charmaine had the conversation they put the machine on Charmaine and Danielle's feeling like she can do it too Mm-mm-mm. it's so it's so anyways you know Don he got four to come to the shop and clean out the storage closet to move stuff around and four seems happy four is like a child in some way he's like still like a little boy and I think that's because he didn't have his father and it, it, it kind of like stumped his growth a little bit Cause he seemed like very boyish and that's why he's with Nikki because Nikki's more like his mom in so many different ways like she looks out for him like he's her child so anyways moving on to that so do you think um Don calls four and say hey four we need to clean out this closet or whatever <laughs> I'm only laughing because I looked up at the slideshow and I see that woman face talk about that ain't my son. I don't know who that man is. So, <laughs> so anyways, um, so does Don is like the manager or the second in charge when Ryan's not there or does he have some title to that shop because he's calling, you know, four and say, hey, we need to clean up the storage closet or less four is just doing it because they're boys whatever but it worked for us happy don's happy it's all good lily's in the shop junior runs up in the shop because he wants to speak to his girlfriend his former girlfriend so he speaks to lily and was like hey lily what's going on with this dude you know cobra told me that you've been having another dude in your house and whoever this jerry carroll ninja turtle looking long hair dude is on your instagram that you took that you're talking about you love him and all this other stuff and she was like oh that's my that's an old friend of mine or whatever and and so junior was like did you f her did you f him did you have sex with him and she was like oh that was a long time ago yes i did i had sex with him but i thought me and you were over i thought you was cheating with your clients so you know i get crazy and shit <laughs> when i get crazy i get drunk and i spread it i spread it wide open i bust that that i bust <laughs> so, so anyways she was like yeah i don't know why corp is telling you my business and everything because that don't even make any sense but yeah you know um i did have sex with him so she admitted you know at least she was real about it but i think she had no other choice to be real because she knows cobra threw her under the bus so she was just like yeah i had sex with him or whatever and then and so junior was like oh so now you so now you be getting mad at me thinking i'm cheating with clients and doing all this other stuff and thinking that i don't love you and you talking about you wanted to be with me you want to have a serious relationship but yeah you cheating on me she's the type of person that you know she gets in her own way she destroys her own relationship because she doesn't know what a happy loving relationship is so what she does is she sabotages her own relationship and she needs help and she needs to get off of drugs and alcohol allegedly so anyways junior was like you know what it's over it's over i'm done i'm through and he hops in his white jeep and he bounces and you know um lily can't wait to get home to talk to cobra she gets home she was and so then cobra's like oh so let me not forget ryan goes home we find out that ryan used to be a cheerleader in high school him and rachel was on the same cheerleading team and all that other good stuff his mother and father together whole family's together because of, they almost lost ryan and right Ry, and ryan's mother did lose a daughter and, and the father lost a daughter so basically they're concerned about his health and his well-being they want him to get married he goes i would do that when i can so we get to lily she goes home cobra sitting at the 
table waiting for Lily to show up. She should have been waiting for Lily to show up with them hands up. She should have had a stick up because Lily got that drug and alcohol strength, allegedly. So, um, so Lily was like, so Cobra, what you do? What you say to Junior said, or whatever? And so Cobra was like, I don't know what you're talking about. So, you know, Lily was like, yo, don't play with me. Don't, don't act dumb. Don't act stupid. And so she was like, oh, so you went running your mouth. I thought you was my friend. I thought you're not loyal. You're two-faced. You're fake. You're shady. So now Cobra ain't going to have no friends at the shop. She's going to have all the women at the shop against her. And then, you know, Lily's going to go to that shop and make Cobra look bad. I don't know what's going to happen, but, you know, it's, Van ain't going to like it. <laughs> Van and Don ain't going to like it. <laughs> so anyways, um... So Don definitely ain't gonna like it. So anyways, they, they're going back and forth. Cobra's like, what are you talking about? Cobra was like, oh, well, you're fake. You're playing two guys. You're, you're playing two, you're two, two penises. You're playing two dicks. You're doing this. You're doing that. And she was like, you know, you shouldn't be lying. You shouldn't be fake. You're the fake person. And so then that's when Lily was like, no, you fake. You're a snake and all this other stuff. So they're going back and forth. And Lily's balling her hands up and she's getting ready to go. She's getting ready to go. She's getting ready to go. And then boom, she hits. She hits you know cobra with a two-piece and then she socked her one time cobra i just seen cobra with her arms you know pushing up against her face and trying to hold her down so on um, reality tv tv shows um it looks like cobra took this fight i guess cobra can fight when she's not stone blacked out drunk because this is the second time that cobra and, you know, Lily got into a fight, so I don't think they should be living together. But, you know, Cobra should have thought about that twice because, you know what, it's wrong for, you know, um, Lily to do what she's doing, but to put yourself in the middle in the middle of this situation well she's kind of like already in the middle because she's working with she's working with junior while his girlfriend is at her crib sleeping with another dude or who, how many other dudes that lily might bring over but if they had a bond they had a connection where lily keeps her where cobra keeps her mouth close and she don't say anything then that's one thing because you know lily said i thought you was loyal i thought i tell you things i let you into my personal life you know so i thought we was cool like that i thought we was tight she was like yo i'm just holding it's taking everything the whole me back from hitting you and they fight but we didn't see cobra's face at all but we seen lily's face and lily either like she bit up on her lip or cobra's elbow hit her face or whatever i don't know if she punched her i didn't see it and um but she is bleeding in the mouth and she's out of breath and cobra goes into the bathroom to do something and so lily says something to her and then cobra sa and then cobra says whatever go wash your Punani, you probably got her face. Was she was she messing with Usher? What's going on? So, anyways, please like, comment, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Be greatly appreciated from the bottom of my heart. My peace, my peoples. One love. I'm out.